Well, hey everyone, welcome to Ryland's vlog and not Ryland today. My name's Clayton and I'm Ryland's pastor. And I wanted to show you a little behind the scenes of what I typically do on a Sunday morning. Because if you've watched any of Ryland's videos, man, it seems like he's the only one who gets here early and he's the one that's setting everything up and uh, working hard. And the reality is, is there's other people that are doing the same thing. Right. He just doesn't show them to you, so we're hijacking his vlog today. So come along, let's go. Well, Ron's not in here. There's his assistant. <laughs> All right, Rylan's in here. He's getting his stuff ready. That's the bumper video for my sermon. There he is. There's the man, the myth, the legend. Hey, don't get don't get mad at me. Be nice to me. You did so um, this for is, one week, and this, now you're gonna vlog. This I is, don't believe it. This is your vlog. What are you talking about? Oh, sweet. All right, good. All right, I need some behind the scenes pastor footage for mine. Okay. So this is our. Uh, Sunday morning prayer time with the staff, except for Ryland, because he's too important, right? Ooh, he's too yes. busy. He's actually in there trying to figure out what he's gonna sing um, for the first service, because he doesn't plan it at all. Hey, we have baptism today, right? I'm gonna fall in. Are you baptizing today? Uh, Morgan and JC. Nice. Right. Okay. Jesus Christ himself. Don't yeah. screw it up. And then the dub's gonna go. Ooh. I'm gonna fall in. He's gonna leave. He's gonna, gonna leave fall. hair in the baptistry. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> me or JC? No, JC. You have no hair. <laughs> He has lots of, oh, lots of this fun. is really it's bad. Wait for your response. It's gonna be awesome. Okay. And then we we usually pray <laughs> for ourselves <laughs> and then for the church. All right, so I'm gonna show you the microphone that I use. This is uh, this awesome microphone by Define. Man, it is killer. They're top notch, world class. Um, probably the best microphone that I've ever used. I've used Countryman stuff before, and it seems like it doesn't stay very well. Um, it's always moving around, and I love this microphone because it has <clears throat> these two ear uh, pieces, and the back of it is completely adjustable. So you can you can adjust it this way. Um, you can take the this, the boom and you can move it back and forth and you can tilt it up and down. So you can get that the, the end of the mic exactly where you want it to be. Um, also it has this awesome cord management system in the back and it just kind of goes straight down um, to the back of your shirt and you can hook it on to your undershirt or to the collar of your shirt you're wearing or whatever. And I usually run everything underneath my, the, my outer shirt, I guess, um, and have it going down to my mic pack. And this, this one's uh, pretty cool. You buy the microphone um, and then you have to buy this piece separately and it just screws in. And this one is, has the, the four little triangular prong one for a Shure microphone. So, man, I love it, but I hide it. I keep it in my office and uh, once I'm done preaching, I bring it back in here um, because I'm afraid it's gonna get broken if I leave it out in the sanctuary. All right, so we just got done with the first service and think it went really well. Um, there's some things that we needed to change and I got to speak with our youth pastor and with Ryland just a little bit and uh, make some tweaks before the second service. And um, for all you worship pastors out there, um, I wanted to just give you a couple of uh, tips that uh, come in from a senior pastor who works with an awesome worship pastor. Um, some things that might be able to uh, help you as a team uh, work better for First thing I would say is be a leader. Um, if you are up on stage and you are running everything and you're dealing with the media and the order of service, I mean, the service is yours. And the most senior pastors, they're 
so focused on their sermon and talking with people and saying hi to people, man, if you you can just see yourself as you're the man, like you're the one that's in charge and uh, and lead that way, it would be a big um, super help for for your your pastor. Um, second thing I would say is be ready. Um, make sure that everything is ready to go on Sunday morning. I would say, in fact, make sure it's ready before Sunday morning, that um, all the, the media is already taken care of, like whether it's slides or videos or whatever you're going to do. Uh, man, be be on top of things with your, your band and have, having already practiced and um, going through everything so that on Sunday morning, um, it's not a chaotic scene. And that honestly um, creates a better atmosphere um, for worship and a better atmosphere for your staff and for your pastor to be able to, you know, not be running around and just nervous and worried about all the different things, but instead can just be a person and be real and be there for your your uh, your church members and for guests. And I promise you, the service will go um, a lot better. Uh, the third thing I would say is take time off. Um, don't be the guy that is up here on Friday and Saturday. If you take Fridays off, don't be the guy that's up here on your time off um, trying to get things taken care of. Prioritize your week so that you can take care of everything Monday through Thursday or the days that you actually are, are working so that you can be with your family, um, so you can be energized and, and ready to go on Sunday morning. Um, a good pastor is going to say this, that the number one priority um, for, for you, uh, besides your relationship with the Lord, is your relationship with your family. If uh, you are doing a really good job as a worship pastor, but your family life is just a wreck, I mean, it's not going to be helpful for anyone. Um, and it's going to eventually affect um, what you're doing on stage um, as you lead your ministry. So I mean, I'd say uh, take care of your family. Fridays and Saturdays, man, I, I don't want Rylan up here at all. In fact, I texted him yesterday asking him a question about church, and he said, dude, it's Saturday. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a joke. Uh, but it was a good reminder to me of being like, I don't need to mess with him on Saturday. If if I need to um, ask him a question, make sure I do it beforehand or, you know, wait till Sunday morning um, so that he can uh, make sure that that time is really special for him and his family. I'll tell you what, it'll help you so much uh, when it comes um, to Sunday morning. And the final thing, I'll, final thing I'll say is this, evaluate your services. If you are not watching your services, man, you are missing out on a huge benefit uh, for the next service and beyond. And I know it's hard. I mean, like The worst thing for me is having to listen to myself preach. I'm like, dude, Clayton, what are you doing? Why are you saying what you're doing? Would you stop doing that with your hands? And uh, you said, um, 87 times. I mean, it's just, it, it can go bad, but it's going to help you. And every service can get a little bit better and a little bit better. And especially on the worship side, like dealing with transitions and and uh, if you have a media team and looking at um, all the behind the scenes of trying to do a live stream and all that kind of stuff, if you can watch your service um, and then be able to evaluate what you're doing well and what you're not doing well, it'll make the next time, uh, the next service so much better. So here at Central, at our church, we uh, have several questions we always ask ourselves. And on Monday, Rylan and I, and sometimes a couple of other staff, we get together and we ask these questions like, um, what worked? Um, what went really well? Did those are some aspects of it that that transition or those songs or um, whatever did did it go really well? And uh, what was really weird? Um, you know, what what was off? What was that one thing that man we cannot keep doing that because that was just awkward. Sometimes it helps. You know, Rylan and I like who's going to end the service? How are we going to end? Am I going to pray and walk down the down the steps and he's going to call people to a time of worship and response? Or am I going to do that after he sings a song? Am I coming back up there to dismiss her? body or who's doing what like you don't want it to be that awkward unprofessional time because I tell you what when people leave that's what they're going to remember and you don't want them to remember the distractions you want them to remember how God spoke to them and called them um, to do something with their lives um, also uh, one thing we ask is did we talk about our vision um, in in the sometime in the service that we point our point our people and people online to our vision, which at Central is to be a church where Jesus changes everything. And so the question is, how's Jesus changing your life? How's he changing our church? I mean, what is he calling us to do? Um, how is he moving in, in your heart? Um, and so whether it's during the welcome and uh, transition time within the the music, sometimes Rylan's talking and he'll say something like that. Or if I'm going to do that in the, the, the sermon, we always want to be putting that in front of our people because we realize something that just because you know it, just because your staff knows it, does not mean that the rest of the church and your community knows it. You've got to be saying it over and over and over and over again. Uh, but those are some some tips. 
um, as we get going for our second service. So we'll show you some video um, of how that went. We're going to have a great service. Uh, we were just now talking to Mel, um, one of the, uh, the people on the worship team, and they're doing Tremble and Holy Ground. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, so, it's going to be a great worship I'm service. I'm super excited today. for that. Buried with Christ in baptism. <laughs> Raised to walk a brand new life. Families are they're similar to sponges. If a, if a, if a sponge has is, is been buried in water and it's soaking up that water, you take it up out of that water and you just got to squeeze it just a little bit, right? And all of a sudden just water pours out. And that's kind of like it is when, when Christ is just invading our lives and it's 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 he's full is there's a fullness in our lives of Christ and all of a sudden every little thing every opportunity every situation Christ begins to overflow in our lives and that's what it looks like for a Christian family when Jesus is being the influence but you know what if your family is just dry and Jesus is not being influenced you're like a dry sponge but you know what a dry sponge does it soaks up anything that's around it right so the question is well I guess what kind of sponge are you right all right, so this is my son, Corbin, um, and he's on Ryland's media team uh, doing stuff behind the scenes. So, Corbin, what's your favorite uh, part of the job? I like doing camera. Yeah, it's the one up cool, on stage? Like, like, you know, like the Roman camera, yeah. whatever it's called. It's pretty sweet. Nice. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Well, service went great. Um, one hiccup is we have a timer for when I start my sermon, and uh, we also had, like, a, a deacon... Um, ordination type stuff at the beginning of my sermon where uh, we had a deacon kind of sharing his testimony like a, a potential deacon and so we had a timer for him and I think he went about 10 minutes and then I got up on stage to preach and um this dude over here uh didn't hit one of the slides that like reset the timer no so, I told you <laughs> so I just kept going and so I didn't re realize it and so I got through the I got towards the end of the sermon and I looked it was already 29 minutes and I'm like oh my goodness this is a really long sermon and so I got I gotta I gotta wrap this thing up so I went really fast at the end and just finished and then at the end I was telling Ryan he goes man it was a good sermon it was short and I was like what are you talking about it was longer than the first service he's like no man it was like 21 22 minutes long <laughs> That was my plan. <laughs> That's Corbin's sure. plan. Yeah, it's his plan to help me to go go shorter on my sermons. So, yeah, great day today. Um, worship ministry, so important. Um, thank you guys for all you do.